Thank you for stopping by the virtual studios of Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. We are honored and proud to sponsor the Future Is Now 2021 virtual conference being held February 8th through 12th. We have joining us for a live conversation, Nicole R. Smith, who is a workforce development specialist, published author, mo motivational speaker, podcast host, and dancer. She is the founder of Step It Up Incorporated, a nonprofit dance organization and winner of many civic awards. Welcome. Yes, welcome. And before we get on the road with you, Nicole, we're just gonna have a word from the host of this fabulous event that's coming up. So give us just one minute. Hey friends, my name is Lynn Graham, founder and CEO of Click Urban and the host of Just Minding My Black Owned Business podcast. I'm super excited to be the host of the Future Is Now Conference 2021, taking place during the week of February 8th through the 12th. Now I created this conference because of the present day unique economic challenges faced across the globe today with a focus on Black, Indigenous, and people of color, entrepreneurs, and business owners, I have pulled together these fantastic speakers to bring us together to learn how to take advantage of downturns to still grow with limited startup capital, support networks, and possibly access to credit, which is not so easy when you are an African-American entrepreneur. Now this event will be a transformation network that will nudge people to awaken the giant within and know that they are capable of living to their full potential through a five day event full of information, mentorship, inspiration, and practical tools that once implemented will cause instant changes to your life, relationships, family, and business. Take me for example, before I founded this conference, I was working a nine to five, but somehow I knew I wanted so much more. And thankfully, a shift in my life happened when I unexpectedly got laid off. This was when I had to think, what did I really want to do with my life? And I had to ask myself, what am I going to do now? And it hit me. I wanted to be that vessel for change. I wanted to impact lives and bring communities together and build tomorrow's leaders by teaching them to learn from yesterday and live for today and hope for tomorrow. Anyone, anywhere can make a positive difference. And the vision was clear. And that's when the Future Is Now Conference was born. So this is my personal invitation asking you to join me and seeing the vision come to life. We have an early bird price for you to take advantage of going on right now. So go to the website, thefutureisnowconference.com and grab your tickets today. Right now, I'm serious. You don't wanna miss this. Get those tickets and I'll see you on February 8th. All right. I'll Oh, all right, Miss Nicole, can you just tell us about who your company and who you are? Okay. Well, my name is Nicole R. Smith, and I put that R in there because Nicole Smith is a very popular name, so that R uh, distinguishes me. Um, as mentioned, yes, I am an author, motivational speaker, and workforce development specialist. Um, I've had the opportunity of working with and mentoring and preparing over 500 interns to um, enter the workforce. And I have just found that um, working with volunteers and interns, they are a very invaluable, but often over um, underestimated workforce. And um, so I, my goal is to talk to organizations, small companies, large companies about really the value and impact that volunteers and interns can have and debunk the myths um, that people seem to have about volunteers and interns that they're unreliable and just all these other kinds of things because I've worked with many and have gotten 
great results. Um, but it's really a matter of, you know, it comes down to just how you treat people. Long story short, without getting into the big and small of it, how you treat people can really be determine if you get if you get like you know, like a huge return on the investment of time, or if you're just like trying to kick them out the door and trying to get them out because you just think that they're like worth not worth your time. Mm. So is that what you will be presenting at the conference? Will that be your topic? Yes. Yeah, so the name of my topic, which I am so excited about, is called Debunking the Myths about Volunteers and Interns and Their Impact. And I just talk about my own personal story. Um, after I graduated from college, I started a nonprofit dance organization going into schools, um, teaching after school um, kids dance uh, and different uh, like salsa, merengue, because I have a, I'm Latino, I'm Latina from, you know, my parents are from Panama. So just teaching and bringing a different culture to kids in after school programs. And, you know, I faced with a lot of entrepreneurs face, like all of a sudden out of nowhere, um, we did really great in one school and then another school wanted us and another school wanted us and we were growing by leaps and bounds, but it was just me and I needed help, but I wasn't in the position to where I could hire somebody full time or even part time because the contracts were coming in, but they were still kind of sporadic. So I didn't want to promise somebody, you know, a certain amount of dollars per every two weeks when the contracts weren't enough really to, to cover that promise. And so um, I was just thinking, what is it that I can do? How can I, you know, what can I do? How can I get this help? Because I'm growing, I am experiencing growing pains. And if I don't get the help, it's going to, it's end up going to, um, you know, kind of flip on me to where I'm, I'm growing so fast, I'm going to topple over. Mm -hmm. And that is where I had the first experience of somebody who believed in what I was doing believed in what I was, uh, the product that I was trying to put out there and was willing to help me at no cost and did a really good job. And that was the first, you know, myth that was debunked that, it, you know, finding good free help is an oxymoron because it's not. And that was what introduced me into working with volunteers and interns and um, learning how to plant the seed and water them in such a way that they produce in such a way that they become your greatest advocates. And also a lot of them will do it and they, they're not looking to get paid until you get to that point where you have enough money coming in and now you can pay somebody part-time, full-time. And a lot of times those volunteers who are willing to work for you for free, now you can pay those same people and you don't even have to worry about vetting them because they've already shown their dedication mm -hmm. and who they are and their work ethic the couple of months before they were with you when you didn't have anything. So now that you got a little bit, you know that you can trust them with it. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. And I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're excited as well, because right now we're in the process of looking for volunteers uh, as well. I know, you know, I, I got your number. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes. So tell us why you have decided to be a part of the Future Is Now conference. I decided to be a part of this because of my deep desire and passion to help others who were right where I was. Because discovering volunteers and interns was the difference between my company really taking off and it tanking. It was that, it was literally that, 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 the pinnacle of a, of a point that helped to get that forward. And um, I went through a lot of uh, mistakes. I learned from watching a lot of people um, of their mistakes. And one of the best things that you can ever get is feedback, right? And when, so when I started, cause I've started, um, I have started two internship programs from scratch and I've worked in internship programs in um, television, radio and the performing arts. And 
we would always do a survey. What did you like about the internship? What didn't you like about the internship? And then I've worked with volunteers, not only with my organization, because it was nonprofit, but um, also currently I work at a nonprofit. And but, but everywhere I go, I believe feedback is huge because you cannot grow without it. And a lot of times people aren't going to just offer it to you. Um, especially in terms of volunteers and interns, instead of telling you that they didn't like something or that they didn't feel uh, appreciated, they're going to vote with their feet and walk away. Uh -huh. Now, now you have high turnover and you have this thing like, oh, I just can't get the help that I need. But maybe there's something if you had just asked, what could we have done differently? But just be ready, because when you ask people what you could do better, they're like, oh, well, since you asked. Let me tell you, so you got to be ready for it, but you have to be open because those are the things are what helped me to build the volunteer and internship programs that I have now. And just with the um, the organization that I work with uh, now, two years ago um, for the for our our season, the year that we put in, um, our volunteers and interns collectively gave basically, I think it's like over 44,000 hours, which which equates to over a $1 million in-kind donation to the organization. So what could you do with that? What could you do with 44,000 hours, right? But that isn't just them coming in and, and you not paying attention to them. There's there's skills and there's things that you got to do and you got to be purpose and you got to be mindful about it. And but if, when you do it right, you will have people who will be willing to help you for life, no matter what it is that you do. If you pick up that phone, they are there. So just I want to. I really, really want to share those with people who were in the same position that I was. You know, you're you're just like this and you need the help and you're like, what am I going to do? And then you're like, oh, OK, I'm going to get an intern. And then it doesn't work out and you try it again. And on the third time, it still doesn't work out. And you're like, ah, forget it. <laughs> I, I want to help. I want to help with that. I want to be the solution. I want to be that solution to, to fill in the gap during that growing pain season, being that bridge to getting them to where they need to be. Wow. Very good. Very, very good. And yeah. Nicole is going to be at the Future Is Now conference, which is going to be February 8th through the 12th. And I think this is a really, really hot topic. And I'm, I'm so thankful that you decided to stop by and share this with us. And thanks for having me. And just a little tidbit, um, I'm so excited. I donated 25 of my inspirational journals. So if anybody who's listening and if they sign up for the, the VIP package, they will get an inspirational journal and it's 101 affirmations for entrepreneurs. And basically it's an big old notebook, just bullet paper that you can write your notes. But on the top, every other page, it's an affirmation. You know, one will say, those early mornings will be worth it. The next page will say, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. The next person will say, you are valuable, you are heard, you are seen, just to continue to encourage, to keep going and pushing past the part when it gets hard because you know those first couple of years or those first couple of months you're all excited and you're like yeah i got this and then reality starts to hit but yeah. then it's like, what are you going to do at that point and sometimes you need to motivate yourself or you need somebody in your corner so it's my way of being in your corner even though i'm not in your ear and yelling and cheering you on when you turn that page hopefully the words will encourage you and give you what you needed for that day to at least get through that day Oh, thank that's you. awesome. That is so Wonderful. awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole, for stopping by. We truly yes, appreciate you. you. And we can't wait to hear the whole gist of what <laughs> you have to offer at the conference. Yes. So thank you so, so much for pouring out. And we will definitely talk again. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was an honor to be here. Thank you for allowing me to have, allowing me to be on your show today. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. We'll be in touch. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. All righty. That was Nicole. And she is definitely a firehouse. Don't you think, Ruth? Absolutely. And she has a lot to offer. This is a really important topic. Uh, I came into broadcasting as an intern, both in radio and in television. 
And it is very important how you treat the interns. Yes, yeah, because so they will either work for you or they will, like she said, make their statement by walking away. So, and then you have an, another kind of problem because you don't have the help that you need. Exactly. So, yes, this is a really hot topic. Make oh. sure you sign up for her workshop. For sure. Okay, who's our next participant? Our next participant will be, let me see if I have it right here, and I know I do. That would be Dr. Artika R. Tyner, who is a passionate educator, author, sought after speaker, and advocate for justice. At the University of St. Thomas School of Law, Dr. Tyner serves as a law professor and founding director of the Center on Race, Leadership, and Social Justice. She is committed to training students to serve as social engineers who create new inroads to justice and freedom. Wow, welcome so much, Dr. Turner. We appreciate you stopping by the studio. And tell us a little bit about your company. Yes, I teach and work at the University of St. Thomas School of Law. This is actually my 15th year of teaching, so I'm excited to help to train those interns, those future attorneys, policymakers, equipping them with the core skills that they need to be able to lead change. So the topic of the future is now. That's really about the preparation that starts in the classroom as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so many young people um, kind of take that for granted sometimes. And, you know, and I think it's because the circles <clears throat> around them are not making it a priority. And education is so huge mm -hmm. at every level, at every age. So we definitely appreciate you doing what you do. Thank you. It's an honor and privilege. As a first generation student, I know that education helped to open up doors for me, not just intellectually, but also economically to be able to bridge and help bring my family out of poverty in some meaningful ways and create what we talk about, that intergenerational wealth, those opportunities, and to inspire the rest of my family from my mother, my siblings, and now my nieces and nephews to now also attend college, gain core skills, and help to build together as a family and a community. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's a new way of looking at things. I really appreciate that you have spoken about the family, how your activity has taken your family along with you. So many people gain what they gain and they leave their families behind in the pursuit of whatever they desire. So that's a very important point. And I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. So you're a law professor and you are the founding director of the Center on Race, Leadership and Social Justice. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what you will be presenting at the Future Is Now conference? Well, through our work at the Center on Race, Leadership and Social Justice, we are at the University of St. Thomas School of Law in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We're using our platforms as we think about it through education to train our students to be leaders and change agents. So we're working on critical issues that are impacting the African American community, from addressing and ending mass incarceration to eradicating the school to prison pipeline, to even looking at the topic that we will discuss at the conference. Specifically, I'm going to look at the financial implications of mass incarceration in the criminal justice system. It's oftentimes overlooked, but I will make it personal because I think a part of the passion must be personal. For me, my family at the peak of the war on drugs, it impacted us immediately. When I count just simply within our first circle, Going into our second circle of our aunts and uncles, we had over 70 years of incarceration. So if we think about that as it relates to lost wealth, if we look at how that impacted our family, because we're sending money in, whether it's taking a prison phone call, putting money on someone's books for the commissary, we're losing money in the, on the ground here in our community. So when I think about how this conference connects to my work and my research, it's an opportunity to have a real conversation. When we know one in three African-American males have been incarcerated in their lifetime, we don't talk about it. One in 18 African-American females 
we know that we have some hidden chains. I know we like to talk about slavery, but we know that incarceration in many ways from the 13th Amendment is slavery by another name. So a part of my research, a part of my passion is working with the students to really tell the truth to testify about the current challenges that we have that are impacting the economy in our local, as you said it best, in our families, in our local communities, to be able to bring forth justice in some meaningful ways. So as we think about this, we are not asking for a handout. We are not begging. We are asking for opportunities for those who have been incarcerated to be able to become gainfully employed, to support their families, and not just to be employed, as we sit here on the day of inauguration, we want to make sure that also voting rights are restored. We know that that's oftentimes a hidden sanction or legally called a collateral sanction, but we want our community to be able to be fully civically engaged, to participate in the electoral process. And we know based upon research, once again, that by being civically engaged, it not only reduces recidivism, but helps to promote strong families and safe communities. So my presentation will focus on a conversation that we often do not have, that it may be taboo to say my uncle, my cousin, or my brother has that permanent scarlet letter of F for felon, but we know it impacts family. We know it impacts children. And here I am, someone who is a child witness to the war on drugs, lifting my voice for justice, to be able to say that people want jobs, they want opportunities, they want a second chance, they earned it, why are we missing this opportunity? And to put it in dollars and cents, we are losing money in our GDP by leaving people unemployed simply because they have previously been incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that, that took me to my next question, your why, but I, you've already said your why. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow. And there's so many people who will identify with that because mm -hmm. they've had the same experience in their families. And what I love is that you're bringing this to the forefront, which will eradicate some of the shame that many families and communities have. Mm -hmm. We have a... In the, African-American community alone, there's a lot of shame that goes along with the fact that there are so many African-Americans incarcerated. And as a people, we don't know how to embrace them and help them to move back into society. And I speak, again, you talk about family. I had an uncle who was in and out of jail so often that when he was home, it was like, oh, guess what? That kind of feeling, you know, and some people really go through that. They have people who are constantly going back into the prison system for one thing or the other. And I love your topic. I know it's going to be powerful and many people will identify with it and want to hear more from you. Uh, the conference is not going to be enough. It's going to be a beginning if you've never done that before, but it's people are going to want to hear more about this because we are seeing such a high rate of black people, Latinos, brown people being constantly brought back into the system, um, the prison system. So thank you so much for coming and sharing this with us. I'm excited for you and I'm excited for the people who are going to hear you. Uh, and I know it's going to have an impact in this conference. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you I for know. the opportunity. Thank you so much for sharing and being passionate about change. That That's really huge. And uh, we look forward to more collaborations with you. Uh, in terms of this important topic, because we need to definitely wrap our heads around it as people of color and really look at the impact that it's having mm -hmm. uh, on our families and our economics. Yes. And I don't think anyone ever thinks about that, that, you know, there are families who are regularly inputting into the system, you know, it's money for the commissary, you know, whatever they can do. Uh, to try to help. And then there are groups who try to help. But the idea is to change the system, perhaps, mm -hmm. but to be able to bring these people back 
out and make them viable, help them to be viable citizens, comfortable in their own skin, no longer ashamed or guilty. Mm -hmm. you know, once they're released, they're released. Now it's time to get on with your life. So how do you help them to get to that point where they have sound self-esteem and a yes. belief, a renewed belief in themselves so that they can live a fulfilling life? Because every person who's in prison has something to offer, just like everybody else. Well, they have I a wholeheartedly story. agree. You know, they have a story, they have something, they have a gift that has been shut down and cut off. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Turner. You, you know, we could go on and on about this. <laughs> yes. So we're definitely gonna have to have you come back, but Dr. Turner is going to be uh, speaking at the Future Is Now conference.com happening February 8th through the 12th. So get your tickets, as you can see on the ticker, we have the website here where you can go and get your ticket and be a part of the movement. So thank you so much. And we're thank looking you. forward to more collaborations with you. I look forward to it as well. And I'll see you all at the conference. Absolutely. Take care. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. That's just two of wow. the participants uh that we were able to uh that was able to stop by and tell us a little bit about their offerings mm -hmm. so next wednesday we're going to have more coming through so stay tuned uh we'll be streaming this live on facebook and youtube from 7 30 until we're done so thank you all for joining us we appreciate you and don't forget get on over there and get your early bird tickets for the future is now conference talk soon bye-bye <laughs>